Hey guys, in this video series we are going to learn how to use the Cloud Firestore database to store and retrieve data in an Android app. Just like the older Firebase real-time database that you might already know and which we already used in another video series, Firestore is a cloud-hosted database, which makes it easy to synchronize data in real-time between multiple connected client apps and across different platforms. So it's a nice and easy way to implement online features that work on different devices without us having to manage our own servers. In this video series we will start at zero and then step by step explore how to use Firestore together with Android and Java. And since I found the concept of this database a bit confusing at first, we will start with some plain theory before we get our hands dirty and write some actual code in the next videos. However, this video is just a summary. There are more detailed videos and explanations about how the Firestore database works by the Firebase team themselves and I will put links to these videos and pages into the description below so you can take a look at them if you want to learn about it in more detail. So the Firestore database is a so-called NoSQL database. Instead of saving our data in tables with rows and columns like we know it from SQLite for example, we store data in Firestore in so-called documents, which each contain a set of key value pairs. These key value pairs are referred to as fields. As you can see this looks pretty similar to the JSON format and it basically is, but it supports extra data types and a single document is limited to one megabyte of size. A document can store simple data types like strings, integers and booleans, but also for example geographical points with longitude and latitude, raw binary values and more. Documents can also store arrays and nested objects, which are here called maps, like this name here for example which consists of a first name and a last name. These documents are organized into collections, which basically serve as folders, and each document within a collection has a unique name. We can either set this name ourselves or let Firebase auto-generate a random ID. The root of the database is always a collection, even if it only contains one single document. The Firestore database is schemaless, which means that we have freedom what fields and data types we put into each document, and we don't necessarily have to put the same fields into documents within the same collection. So if we for example have a collection of users, we can later add more fields to a user document without breaking anything. We don't have the same freedom in SQL, where we have our tables with clearly defined rules about what columns we have available for each row and what data type we can put into which column. However, for querying purposes, it's usually better to have the same fields over multiple documents. The Firebase real-time database, the older one, is also a NoSQL database by the way, but without this documents and collection structure. Instead there everything is organized into a single tree. Collections can't contain anything else in documents. No raw fields, no other collections, just documents. And documents can't contain other documents. However, a document can contain sub-collections. And so it often is the case to have a collection that contains documents, that contains sub-collections, that contains documents, and so on. For example, we could have a chat app that saves its chat rooms in a collection called Rooms, where each room is represented by a document. And since Firestore is optimized for a large number of small documents, like tens of millions or even billions, we could store each chat message in a separate document. So each room would have a subcollection called messages, which contains all the messages in form of documents. And of course each room could have more additional subcollections. Documents and collections are created implicitly. We simply create a reference to it and set a value on it. If it doesn't exist, it will be created. If it exists, it will be updated. And when we delete all documents within a collection, the collection will be deleted as well. It is also worth mentioning here that Firestore queries are shallow by default, which means that if we want to get a document, we don't have to retrieve all its subcollections together with it. Whereas in the Firebase real-time database, when we retrieve an element in the tree, we also have to retrieve all the data below it. So the performance in Firestore is proportional to the size of the result set, not the size of the whole data set. The Firestore database also works offline. Of course we can't update anything in the cloud without an internet connection, but we have a copy of the Firestore data that our app is currently using, cached on the device and we can query it, listen to it and make changes to it. As soon as we are back online it will be synchronized with the cloud. This offline persistence feature is enabled by default on Android. So which one should you choose for a new project, the older real-time database or the Firestore database? On the Firebase page they recommend to use Firestore for new projects if you are comfortable with using a beta version. Firestore scales better and has some more advantages over the real-time database like better querying. In the future it will become more and more reliable and they will add more features to it. I will put a link to the full comparison between these two into the description box as well, so you can take a look at all the differences. But Firestore is either equal or better in pretty much any point of comparison except reliability, but only because it is still in beta. 
it will eventually become more reliable than the real-time database. That being said, you can also use both databases together in the same app and for some features this is recommended. Okay, this was a little introduction. In the next videos we will then start coding. So don't forget to subscribe to the channel to not miss it and if this video was helpful, please leave a like. Take care.